Chapter 1 Classification of Psychiatric Disorders In medicine syndromes existed long before the etiology of many illnesses were known With scientific progress some syndromes have been found to be true disease entities while others have been split into discrete entities and others still jettisoned Thus the modern approach to classification has been to establish syndromes in order to facilitate research and identification of specific diseases but the multifactorial etiology of psychiatric disorders may make this goal of identifying psychiatric syndromes as discrete diseases an elusive ideal both DSM-5 and ICD-11 are syndrome based classifications that is they are based on commonly co-occurring symptoms and not on etiology psychobiology and prognosis syndromes and diseases a syndrome is a constellation of symptoms that are unique as a group it is the particular combination of symptoms that makes the syndrome specific korsakoff syndrome illustrates the progression from symptom to syndrome to disease initially korsakoff recognized the following as significant symptoms among alcoholics that is confabulation and impressionability later the following were identified as key features of the syndrome that is disorientation to time and place euphoria difficulty in registration confabulation and tram like thinking finally the following discovery turned the syndrome korsakoff psychosis into a true disease with neuropathological basis and that is severe damage to the mammary bodies many a times we can empathize with patient symptoms by understanding the context in which they have risen this has led to the distinction between the symptoms that are primary and secondary primary symptoms are immediate result of the disease process while secondary symptoms are psychological elaborations of or reaction to the primary symptoms the term primary is also used to describe symptoms that cannot be derived from any other psychological event earlier distinctions the first major classification of mental illness was based on the distinction between disorders arising from the disease of the brain and those with no such obvious basis that is functional versus organic states but the increasing evidence of the role of genetics and of neuropathological abnormalities in many of the so called functional illnesses have rendered this classification absurd and to rectify this the category of organic mental syndromes and disorders was renamed as delirium dementia and amnestic and other cognitive disorders in dsm4 coming on to organic syndromes the syndromes due to brain disorders can be classified into acute subacute and chronic In acute organic syndromes the most common feature is alteration of consciousness which can be dreamlike depressed or restricted this gives rise to four subtypes delirium subacute delirium organic stupor or torpor and the twilight state delirium is a dreamlike change in consciousness so that patient is not able to distinguish between mental images and perceptions leading to hallucinations and illusions In subacute delirium there is general lowering of awareness and marked incoherence of psychic activity so that the patient is bewildered and perplexed isolated hallucination illusions and delusions may occur and the level of awareness varies but is lower at night time this state can be regarded as a transitional state between delirium and organic stupor organic stupor or torpor in this the level of consciousness is generally lowered and the patient responds poorly or not at all to stimuli and after recovery has no recollection of events during the episode in twilight state consciousness is restricted such that the mind is dominated by small group of ideas attitudes and images these patients may appear to be perplexed but often their behavior is well ordered and they can carry out complex actions a common feature of all these acute organic states are disorientation incoherence of psychic life and some degree of entrograde amnesia In addition there are organic syndromes in which consciousness is not obviously disordered for example organic hallucinosis due to alcohol abuse occurring in clear consciousness and korsakoff syndrome which is an example of amnestic disorder is characterized primarily by the single symptom of memory impairment now it's not clear in the text if acute and subacute subtypes are combined here as the description moves directly to chronic from acute subtype i think subacute delirium will come under subacute subtype Coming on to chronic organic states these include the various dementias and the amnestic disorders Dementias can be generalized such as Lewy body disease Alzheimer's disease etc or focal such as frontal lobe dementias which is associated with a lack of drive and foresight inability to plan ahead and indifference to the feelings of others 
but with no disorientation. Some patients may also demonstrate a happy-go-lucky carelessness and a festitious humor, termed Witzelzucht, whereas others can be rigid in their thinking and have difficulty in moving from one topic to the next. The most common cause is trauma to the brain, such as those occurring in RTAs. The presence of frontal lobe damage can be assessed psychologically using Wisconsin card sorting test or Stroop test. Coming on to amnestic disorders. These are chronic organic disorders in which there is the single symptom of memory impairment. The major neuroanatomical structures involved are the thalamus, hippocampus, mammillary bodies and the amygdala. Amnesia is usually the result of bilateral damage but in some cases can occur with unilateral damage as well. And interestingly, the left hemisphere appears to be more critical than the right in its genesis. But if other signs of cognitive impairment are present, such as disorientation or impaired attention, the diagnosis is dementia. Coming on to functional syndromes. This term is seldom used nowadays and refers to those syndromes in which there is no readily apparent coarse brain disease. For many years, it was customary to divide these functional mental illnesses into neurosis and psychosis. The person with neurosis was believed to have insight into his illness with only part of the personality involved in the disorder and to have intact reality testing. The individual with psychosis, by contrast, was believed to lack insight, had the whole of his personality distorted by the illness and constructed a false environment out of his distorted subjective experience. Jaspers regarded the person with neurosis as an individual who has an abnormal response to difficulties in which some specific defense mechanism has transformed their experiences. Schneider has suggested that neurosis, psychogenic reactions and personality disorders are variations of human existence that differ from the norm quantitatively rather than qualitatively and were not true illnesses in the sense that there was a morbid process in the nervous system while he considered that functional psychosis did represent true illness. Owing to the confusion that abounded in the various usage of these terms, DSM-IV has excluded the term neurosis totally from its nomenclature. Personality Disorders and Psychogenic Reactions In the English-speaking world, it was customary to separate the neurosis from personality disorders. But in the German-speaking countries, epitomized by Schneider, the neurosis was regarded as a reaction of abnormal personalities to mild or moderate stress and of normal personalities to severe stress. This difference in approach continues and is reflected in the differing approaches to personality disorder in DSM-4 and ICD. With DSM-4 placing personality disorders on a separate axis, while ICD-10 represents both on axis 1. Acute anxiety and hysteria were considered to be varieties or psychogenic reactions provoked by stress and determined by personality and cultural factors. Sometimes the stress can be believed to cause psychotic reactions termed symptomatic or psychogenic psychosis, for example, a person with paranoid personality who in the light of ongoing marital difficulties begins to suspect his wife's fidelity and finally becomes deluded about it. These have gained increasing acceptance and are now called acute and transient psychotic disorders in ICD-10 and brief psychotic disorder with or without marked stressor in DSM-4 and 5. Modern classifications As we know, two modern systems of classification are in use those being the DSM-5 and the ICD. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual is used mainly in the United States and is prepared by the American Psychiatric Association every few years. DSM is often used in research including drug trials because each disorder is operationally defined but is considered less user-friendly than the ICD. It first appeared in 1952 and since then it has evolved significantly and DSM-5 was published in 2013. The International Classification of Diseases is a World Health Organization document and covers all medical conditions. Chapter 5 is devoted to mental health and behavioral problems and it is used throughout the world. It is more clinically oriented and is not so rigid in its definitions, eschewing operational definitions in favor of general descriptions. It allows for clinical judgment to inform diagnosis but this freedom makes it unsuitable for research purposes. To solve these, different versions of ICD-10 now exist. These include the clinical version, a version with diagnostic criteria for research which resembles DSM-5, and a version for use in primary care, consisting of definitions for 25 common conditions as well as a shorter version of 6 disorders for use by other primary care workers. ICD-11 came into effect globally on 1st January 2022. Comparison of DSM-5 and ICD-11 
it was thought that our knowledge of genetic underpinnings of many psychiatric disorders would have increased to the extent that classification based on the underlying psychobiology would be possible. But not one laboratory marker has been found to be specific in identifying any of the DSM-defined syndromes. As we know, epidemiologic and clinical studies have shown extremely high rates of comorbidity among the disorders, undermining the hypothesis that syndromes represent distinct etiologies, a high degree of short-term diagnostic instability for many disorders, and the lack of treatment specificity is the rule rather than the exception. Both changes and their absence, for example, failure to remove oppositional defiance disorder from DSM-5 has been robustly criticized. Let's first discuss DSM-5. Controversy began even while DSM-5 was being developed with charges of lack of transparency and these only continued after the publication. DSM-5 has jettisoned the 5-axis classification used in DSM-4. The removal of the bereavement inclusion from the criteria of major depression was also widely criticized. The criteria to specify the features of normal grief were included as to forestall this to some degree. Further areas of controversies are the addition of 14 new disorders and the failure to remove oppositional defined disorder. This table summarizes the new disorders included in DSM-5. Coming on to ICD-11, Chapter 6 deals with the mental and behavioral disorders. Clinical studies by various working groups were done to examine the diagnostic process and to compare the accuracy and consistency with the proposed guidelines. The study found that re-experiencing the trauma was unclearly defined in ICD-11 that there were problems applying the functional impairment criterion and that for adjustment disorder the criterion did not assist clearly enough in distinguishing adjustment disorder from the vignette in which no disorder was present. On the other hand, clinicians were able to distinguish complex post-traumatic stress disorder and prolonged grief disorder from similar conditions and from normality. Clinicians' ratings of the proposed diagnostic guidelines were positive overall, but assessment of treatment options and prognosis were rated less favorably. The previous subtypes of personality disorders have been omitted and acute stress disorder has been removed as it is not considered a psychiatric disorder. Personality disorders now have much reduced number of categories and they are based on severity. Five trait domains that represent a set of dimensions that correspond to the underlying structure of personality traits are included. These include negative affectivity that is the tendency to manifest distress Dissociality, that is the tendency to disregard social conventions and the rights of others. Disinhibition, that is the tendency to act impulsively. And then caustic, that is the tendency to control one's own or other's behaviors. And detachment, the tendency to maintain emotional or interpersonal distance. Interview schedules. Diagnostic interview schedules were developed to carry out epidemiological studies in which diagnosis was standardized. The structured clinical interview for DSM-5, that is SCID-5, has four versions. A clinical version, a research version, a clinical trials version, a personality disorder version, and a screening version. There is one more for personality disorder, termed an alternate model for personality disorder, and it differs from the pre-mentioned SCID-5PD, as the former allows for dimensional assessment of personality, while the latter is based on traditional categorical models of personality disorder. The Composite International Diagnostic Interview, that is the CD, was also developed from the DIS, but unlike SCID, is not a semi-structured interview. Instead, it is standardized and is suitable for use with lay interviews, as questions are asked in a rigid and prescribed manner. The only judgment the interviewer has to make is whether the respondent understood the question, and if not, it is repeated verbatim. CD is available in computer format also, and so can be self-administered. CD was later explained to facilitate ICD-10 diagnosis. This resulted in the World Health Organization World Mental Health CD. It has a screening section and can also be used in a modular form for evaluating specific disorders. It also has sections for functioning, services sought and family burden. The symptoms are entered into a computer algorithm for diagnosis according to ICD or DSM-5. The schedule for clinical assessment in neuropsychiatry or SCAN was evolved from the older present-day examination. It is a set of instruments consisting of PSC-10, the scan glossary, the item group checklist, and the clinical history schedule. Scan provides diagnosis according to both ICD and DSM criteria. The interview itself is semi-structured, the aim being to encapsulate the clinical interview while minimizing its vagaries. The symptoms ratings are then entered into a computer algorithm to obtain a diagnosis according to either classification. SCAN can generate a current diagnosis, a lifetime diagnosis, or a representative episode diagnosis. 
The use of mental health professionals in interviewing makes this an expensive method but has the advantage of approximating the gold standard diagnosis achieved by clinical interview.